Hi, and welcome to this quick tool review. This time around, we'll be looking at a Kiwi's Cam 401 digital multimeter. Available on Amazon currently for $25.99 with a $3 coupon. It's another small, inexpensive digital multimeter. I like looking at these because uh, I like to see how the bottom end of the market really improves from once upon a time, the really inexpensive cheese ball Harbor Freight ones that you would call barely passable as a meter to you know what we have now, which is very decent multimeters. Uh, if you're not looking for ultra precision work, more than adequate for everyday operations. This one also includes a feature not available in any other meter I've seen. So I'd like to look at that one as well. And uh, let's just dig right in. And just so you know, this multimeter was given to me to evaluate, but actually this one I purchased on my own. I didn't even know it was a Kiwi's, but I really love this multimeter. I purchased this one on Amazon a couple years ago because it had DC clamp uh, current measurement, which is not common except in the higher end multimeters. So this does AC, which is common for current measurement in the clamp, but DC is rare. And I use this all the time. In fact, I'm using it right now because my wife's car battery's dead. I'm charging it and I want to see how much current's going into the battery. That lets you know what state of charge it's at. And uh, this multimeter works great in a pinch. All right, so let's see what we have in the box. Open it up, plastic packaged everything. I really like the fact this plastic package, except for the environmental impact of all this plastic that you immediately throw out that goes into a landfill. That's kind of crappy. Comes with some nice probes. Once upon a time, all of these inexpensive multimeters came with really crappy probes. Now they've got these molded designs that are sort of copy of the flukes and they're pretty darn decent comes with a temperature probe, which is just a, uh, uh, a simple junction temperature measurement, uh, non-insulated. Comes with batteries, which is a nice plus, so you can just get to working with the meter without looking for some batteries, and a manual. Just looking to see how these multimeter probes have evolved. Here was an original inexpensive multimeter probe. Look at this piece of junk. So somewhere inside here, there you go, a crimp on, oh, they soldered it on. Sometimes it's just crimped on lead press fit into a piece of plastic with a really crappy banana plug at the end. This was from the, the $9 Harbor Freight uh, multimeter. When you compare, you've got an insulated tip that you can pull this part off. That's really on there. With then have a long probe as well, all molded. I assume it's soldered or crimped in there, but at least it's molded in place so it's got some strain relief with a pretty decent banana. I don't know why they put these protectors in there, but that's more wasted plastic, which is unfortunate. But these probes are a huge step up from these over here, which this problem, oh, it says thousand volt probe. This is a thousand volt probe. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about that. Adding batteries is pretty straightforward. It looks like it's a single screw, not captive, which I found a lot of these cheap meters don't have. That's unfortunate in the field but not the end of the world. Uses three AAA batteries. So when I store meters like this in my car, uh, I always have one in my car in case I need it at the side of the road. Um, one thing that's a problem is when it's a screw in battery thing because I don't leave the uh, battery uh, retainer is because I don't leave the batteries in the meter because you know batteries leak as soon as they get a little bit old and so I store the batteries separately uh, unfortunately this one does not have that feature next up let's take a look at a feature that's sort of fundamental to these meters which is its display and a lot of these meters the display is either not very contrasty limited viewing angle or the characters are too small this has none of those issues. It's a very readable display. I like the analog uh, sort of copy display at the top. And in addition, it has a backlight. It's not super bright. I have a lot of, uh, a lot of light here where I'm shooting this. So it does get kind of washed out, but you can see there in the dark, it'd be more than adequate. The display is beautiful and that's a huge plus. Here's the side by side with the Fluke 87, a <laughs> probably 10 times more expensive multimeter and you can see the display kicks the fluke's butt. The backlight on the fluke is also not super bright. All right, for quick comparison here, here's the fluke in parallel with this meter on a power supply over here. All I've got is the probes from one, attach the probes to the other, attach the power supply. And you can see 
Here there's a 20 millivolt difference roughly between the meters uh, at three and a half volts. If we jump up to 23, there's like a 17 millivolt, 170 millivolt difference at 23 volts, 46 volts. This and the power supply uh, are close. This one is three, three tenths of a volt too high, uh, which is 300 millivolts or I don't know, what is that percentage wise? Tenth of a percent accuracy kind of thing. That's not horrible. So it's not as accurate as the Fluke, but uh, if you're looking for an extreme precision multimeter, you're not gonna buy a $25 multimeter. You might opt for the $300 multimeter, although these days there might be some better options out there. Looking at 110, let's go into the plug here. Got a manually switch between AC and DC, which I find is interesting. So the DC was fluctuating all over the place because it was trying to take an average 119.8. And let's just move the probes right over to the Fluke here, which has a separate position for uh, AC. So it's about the same 119.3. So similar measurements again. So AC measurement, again, if you're buying this meter, you're not looking for extreme precision. You are looking for functionality and everyday use. Looking at some standard measurement values using the same probes, I'm just gonna move them from one meter to the other. Here the Fluke is measuring 332.5. It reads 330, it is not a precision resistor. Gotta put this guy on resistance, he would appreciate that. 330.3. So again, reasonably accurate, reasonably precise. Here is a one mag ohm resistor. Is it one mag? That looks like 105. Yeah, it should be a one mag resistor. Oh, you know what I'm not doing? I shouldn't be using these probes for this because at one mag, the resistance of the skin on my hand is starting to uh, approach this. So let's uh, take my the skin of my hand out of this. I've got some alligator probes here. Came with one of my power supplies. Let's just use these instead. So we'll just clamp this guy on here. 1.19 meg. So basically when I was holding it, I was putting myself in parallel with it because such small currents are being measured here that you're, enough can go through your hands, even with my dry hands, that uh, it can lower the value significantly. So that's 1.189 mega ohm and 1.196, really close. Again, you're not looking for this for super precision, just approximate readings. That's pretty good. So here's the measurement of AC. I'm actually on the DC mode on this. You got to manually switch over to AC and we've got 120 volts right there and hit the function again, 60 Hertz. That seems reasonable. And flip over to the Fluke. And we get 119.7. Hit Hertz, 59.99. They're in decent agreement. All pretty reasonable measurements. Like a lot of multimeters today, this guy has non-contact voltage measurement. So you put it in that mode and you've got live and non-contact voltage switching between here and here. I think it's supposed to tell you if it's live. This is live, but it's not telling me it's live. Maybe because no current's being drawn, this is just a plug sticking in an outlet with no load. Uh, the non-contact voltage takes a little while. So if you're looking quickly to see if you can find uh, a hot lead, don't, uh, don't just jump in there because it takes a little time for this thing to decide, which for me makes this not a terribly useful feature. I guess if I was really desperate and I knew mentally that I had to wait on the, the hot lead for that detection to occur, uh, that would be fine. Although it seems to think the hot leg, in this case the black leg, is uh, the low some of the time and the high some of the other time, the rest of the time. So. With no load here, the neutral and the ground are going to be basically the same measurement, so we would have no way to tell because there should be essentially no current flowing in those. So I'm going to call the non-contact voltage interesting, but not overly useful. So I tried to use an interesting feature on this meter that's unique to this meter. 
the phase measurement and it's basically designed for three phase motors and you're supposed to just have the red contact lead which is going to make this essentially a non-contact measurement because you're not allowing current to flow through the meter since the common is left undisconnected and then you touch phase one and the a will stop flashing it'll go to b and the b will start flashing you touch b the b will stop flashing it'll go to c you touch c and then it'll tell you whether the motor is going to go clockwise or counterclockwise uh, but the reality is I couldn't get this to work at first. I tried it with a variable frequency drive and I and that didn't work at all and I thought you know, there's a lot of high frequency noise in a variable frequency drive uh, Especially an inexpensive one like I've got when I look at the frequency on the output It's this meter was saying 20 something kilohertz. So it was actually measuring the individual pulses rather than the sine wave averaged, uh, you know, the average of the whole thing, which, you know, is what the motor would s mostly see. Um, so then I tried with my rotary phase converter, and again, I couldn't get it to measure. Now, you notice while we're sitting here, it's actually gone through all three of these things. It's picked up just AC in the room, but I couldn't get it to uh, uh, pick up any of the phases directly. I even tried hooking common to ground like earth ground and then touch the three phases, but that didn't work either. Hopefully that would reduce noise in the system, but I just couldn't get it to work. So I think the phase thing, as far as I can tell, I can't get it to work. I think it's a really interesting idea, but much like the non-contact voltage measurement that takes a fair amount of time before it decides it's there, um, I think they've got some work to do there. All the other measurements seem to be reasonable. As a side note, I did want to take this apart just so you could see what's inside, take the overmold off and open it up and just see how the PC board was laid out. And parts of it come off okay, but they really did the overmold well, and it is really hard to get off, and I think I damage it or stretch it out of place. They must have heated the overmold and then let it shrink in place because I couldn't get it off without damaging the meter. So I'm just going to leave it at that. My thoughts about the meter overall is that for the price, you know, it's pretty decent. The display is fantastic. The display is better than any other meter I own. That, they really hit the mark there. Um, the accuracy on all these other scales, I went through them and they are, they are okay. They're not great. I've seen some inexpensive meters with slightly better accuracy than this, but not a lot better uh, compared to the Fluke. The Fluke, by the way, hasn't been calibrated in a long time, so I don't know that I should count on it being an exact reference either. Uh, it hasn't been calibrated since I bought it. Um, the non-contact voltage takes a long time to decide the voltage is there, which I think is a little problematic. Uh, that amount of time, if you're trying to search for a line in the wall or you're trying to search an AC cord, you may move past it before it IDs it, and that's not safe. So I think that's not great. The phase measurement, I couldn't get to work at all, uh, neither with a variable frequency drive or with a rotary phase converter output three phase. Uh, the meter measured the voltage is fine. It got the frequency fine on the rotary phase converter. It just could not non-contact. Because you're not using the common, it could not, it could not detect that there's a phase there, which is unfortunate. Um, I couldn't get it to work at all, so I think they need some work there. The, uh, I like the fact that they've got storage for the probes on here. That's handy. Uh, especially if you're going to store in your toolkit. looks like they copied the Fluke design where you've got this uh, magnetic thing that snaps in the back here, but they didn't include it, so I don't know. Um, they, a magnet would be really handy to hook on something you're working on, uh, but that's not there. And a captive screw would also be really great, uh, especially if you're in the field and you lose that little screw, because with this meter, it doesn't snap in place. Without that screw, you're going to have to tape this in place or something in order to keep the batteries from falling out. Uh, I'd be willing to pay a couple bucks more for that, just for thought. Uh, other than that, I think the meter is decent. I'm not going to give it a thumbs up because it's not excellent, but it's it's okay, and it wouldn't be a horrible value for the money. Uh, there are some other inexpensive ones out there that I think do a little bit better job. If they get these features working, those will be fantastic. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.